So of all the lasers that are out there, there is one category that is by far the most popular, and a lot of times it's also the most expensive, and that's the desktop CO2 laser. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a lot of the really popular machines, and I wanna give you my recommendation on which one I think is best for your situation. Now, before we get into the lasers, you might be asking why should you trust my opinion? The short answer is uh, don't. I definitely want you to do your own research, but really the purpose of this video and a lot of the ones I do on this channel is basically to give you all the information that's buried in all of these websites, as well as my hands-on experience with a lot of these different machines. I've put together a big list of all the machines that are out there. If you wanna check that out, there is a link down below. And while I don't run like a full product laser shop day to day, I've probably been hands-on with as many, if not more machines than anyone else you might find on YouTube. And I'm really trying to pull all of that experience together. And it's got me thinking since I've kind of been around so long and I've had a lot of experience with a bunch of these different machines, you can kind of think of me as Gandalf. And if you're asking, is he really going to be forcing Lord of the Rings references throughout this video? Yes, I am, or at least long enough for this bit. I don't look like Gandalf. All right, let's talk about the machines we are going to compare. You might call them a fellowship of the laser things. You're gonna get corny. Now, a lot of these companies have a bunch of different versions of these machines. So we're basically gonna go through by manufacturer and I'm gonna pick the machine that we are actually going to compare. So starting off is the G-WIC or the G-Machine that I like to call. And they have basically four versions of more or less the same machine. So they have a 50 watt base version that also comes in black that they're calling the Nox. They have a 55 watt version, the Pro, that's actually gonna be the one that we're going with. Uh, and then they also have an RF metal tube version. And we'll talk more about those metal tubes here in a Second. And we're gonna go through these from low to high in terms of price. So starting out, we are at $2,639 as of October 2nd, 2024. All right, moving on to Ohmtech, a company I have done a lot of reviews for the machines in the past. Specifically, the Polar seemed to be really, really popular when they launched it. And they've just updated that machine. Uh, it's on pre-order, so I don't have this in my shop, to 55 watts, it was 50 watts before. But really the major difference on this machine um, is the fact that they have added in a touch screen as well as autofocus. And the autofocus was the really annoying part about this machine before. And you can see we are moving up in price. This is going to be right under $2,800. With Ohmtech, I'm pretty sure that they're doing is they're taking those GWIC machines and more or less rebranding them and adding in a few different features. So I kind of think of those two machines interchangeable. And really the major difference between the two that I can tell currently is still going to be that touch screen. Next up is going to be the Atomstack Hurricane. This is a brand new machine. Actually, did a review of this about a month ago, and this one also is on pre-order. But unlike the other two companies that we've talked about, um, this is basically their only CO2 machine. Everything else is diodes. And the Hurricane is gonna be the same price as the Polar Plus at 2,800 bucks. Next up, we are jumping in price. Uh, and this is going to be from Xtool. And I've got several of the Xtool machines actually behind me right now. Uh, specifically, we are going to be talking about their brand new P2S. Also did a review of that here recently, which is kind of like a spec bump of the original P2. If you want the major differences, you can dive into that video. But the big thing is they made the alignment of the mirrors a lot easier by adding in a inline red laser beam. The exhaust fan is more powerful and you can actually fully remove it. And they did some software tweaks to make it faster. But now we're definitely getting up there in price. We're at $4,300. Next up is going to be a machine from Flux. Flux actually has a bunch of different CO2 desktop machines. And actually the Ador is their only diode machine. I also did a review of that here recently, but they have a really small CO2 machine called the BMO that I think they first came out with. And then they expanded that to the Beambox, the Beambox Pro. And then their biggest, most capable machine is the Hexa. And that is the one that we are going to talk about. About. Also one I've done a full review on if you wanna check out that video too. Now this one is 60 watts and it also is more expensive than Xtool coming in right under $5,500. All right, next up, we're kind of moving into a different category of manufacturers. These are going to be more on the professional industrial side and the prices are also going to reflect it. To start off, we're gonna be talking about Thunder, specifically the Thunder Bolt, uh, which has been one of my favorite machines that I've had in my shop um, over the last year or so. And they actually just had a revamp to their line. Uh, 
uh, where they added in the Bolt Plus as well as the Bolt Pro. The Bolt Pros, I don't really see as a desktop machine. I mean, you can see they actually have stands on them, so they're not gonna sit on a desk. So we're gonna roll those out. And then the major difference between the Bolt and the Bolt Plus is you're gonna have higher speeds with the Plus as well as a stronger laser tube. And the Bolt laser tube is going to be a 30 watt RF tube, which brings us back to the laser tube discussion. So basically these lasers, you're gonna have one of two different options. The cheaper version is going to be a full glass tube, which is also going to be a DC or direct current laser beam. And the main benefit of those is that they are cheaper, but the drawbacks with them is it's gonna be not as strong as the lower powered RF tubes because those RF tubes are basically focusing all of that power to a smaller laser dot. So RF tubes are gonna be a lot better at engraving as well as cutting if you're comparing wattages directly side by side. Also another great thing about the RF tubes are they are a lot more like industrial and rigid. Uh, you don't actually have to chill them them with water, which is something you have to do with those glass DC tubes. They can just be air cooled. Um, so that's one less thing you have to have attached to your machine. And I need to do a video that actually tests this side by side, but we're gonna go off the thunder metric for this video uh, that a 30 watt RF tube compares about the same to a 60 watt glass tube. And the Thunderbolt is also going to be $5,500 like the Flux Hexa. Okay, moving right along to Aeon. And this is gonna be the first of the companies that I haven't had hands-on experience in terms of testing in my my shop. I do have a couple machines that are coming in the next few weeks, so we'll be able to update you on that. But there are a lot of reviews out there for these machines, so I feel pretty safe for putting this on the list. Um, the only real desktop machine uh, that is going on with this is going to be the Mira line, specifically the Mira S Red Line. So earlier this year, they announced their Red Line series, which is a pretty big update that's going throughout their product line. I actually went down to a conference in Orlando where they talked a lot more about that if you want to see it. But long story short, the Mira S, uh, it's basically way faster. It's got a lot of really nice quality of life upgrades like quick swap modules on the lenses. Everything is nice and sealed and the speeds can get absolutely wild. And in fact, the speeds can get so wild that I'm going to put two different versions of this machine on the list, just so you can kind of see the spec increase you can get with the increased amount of money. But the initial one is going to be a CO2 DC tube, and that's going to come in at $7,000. And that's a 45 watt glass tube. And now the more expensive version that we also are going to add has a 30 watt metal tube. Again, that's going to be comparable to like a 60 watt CO2 tube, and that's going to add 2000 bucks. So now we're in the $9,000 range. Uh, but the main reason that I wanted to do that uh, is because of motors you get when you jump up to a RF tube. Um, so they're giving an acceleration of 8G, which you'll see a comparison of here in a minute, uh, but then a top speed of 35,000 millimeters per second and making this machine the fastest one that you can get for a desktop that I currently know of. So I really wanted to have like the top end specs on this list. Next up is going to be the company that kind of started this entire category, and that's going to be Glowforge. Uh, Glowforge really hasn't seen a lot of updates over the years in terms of the machines themselves up until this year. So they have released uh, what they're calling their HD versions, and that's gonna be to their Plus and their Pro machine. But then the major difference I'm seeing between the HD and the non-HD version is you're getting a nicer camera and some higher end speeds. Uh, so we're actually gonna go ahead and go with the top end Glowforge, uh, which is 7,000 dollars because I really want to show what seven thousand dollars would get you for a different type of machine but if you wanted to go the Glowforge route you can definitely get a machine that's a lot cheaper and last but not least this is going to be the top end uh, for even the pro market so we're talking about epilogue which is like designed and I think a lot of it's manufactured inside of the United States and we're gonna be looking at their fusion maker line specifically their 12 inch fusion maker so, and that's gonna come with a 30 or 40 40 watt metal slash ceramic tube, uh, and that's gonna start at $10,000. So, so this machine right here is going to be the most expensive that we're going to talk about. And so basically we have a range from like 2,500 bucks all the way up to 10K. Let's see how they stack up against each other. It's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out your door. And quick disclaimer, as always, I'm pretty much an affiliate for like all of these companies. So if you do decide to pick up one of these machines and this has been helpful, if you use the link down below, it helps support this channel. So how are we going to compare them? We are going to be talking about 10 different categories that include price, the laser, like the power of it, the speed, the acceleration, the build quality, the work area, the depth, the interface on the machine itself, the type of software you can use it with. And finally, and honestly, probably the most important, the type of support that the company provides. And for 
each of these categories, I'm gonna rate the lasers from one to five, with five being the best. And then a huge caveat is that the weight of these is going to be the same across categories, which probably isn't going to be the case for you. So just know for me, I'm keeping everything the same, and you can adjust these as needed. And to make it fun for me, each of these categories are gonna to relate to something from Lord of the Rings. Starting with Price, which is kind of like the hoard of treasure underneath Smog from The Hobbit. So this one's probably easiest to give all of the ratings to, where the cheapest machines got a five, and then the most expensive actually gave a zero. So like the RF version of the Aeon and the Epilogue are going to get a zero, um, so they don't get any points. All right, next up is going to be the laser power itself. And I'm gonna relate that to the power of the elves, those like two trees that they have. The undying lands of Valinor. And yes, this is super nerdy. The majority of these machines are going to get a four because we're in the 55 to like 60 watt range, including those RF beams that are 30 watts, which relates to 60. Uh, there is one machine that's gonna be a hair higher, and we're gonna talk about that at the very end, so be sure and stick around. But then rounding out the bottom with three points is going to be the DC glass version of the Aeon Mira that's 45 watts, and then the Glowforge Pro HD, which is also 45 watts. Next up, let's talk about speed. And this is really where these machines start to separate, because at the very top end, we've got the Aeon Mira 5S RF at 3,500 millimeters per second, um, which is wild. And again, this is something I definitely want to test to see like how practical that top end speed is. It's really cool that they can do it. Uh, so that's gonna get the full five points. But the step down from that is gonna be the 12 to like 1500 millimeter per second range. Uh, so we're gonna give four points to the Epilogue Maker, and then the Aeon Machine that is DC Glass is going to be 1200. Going down from there, we've got Flux and Thunder with three points uh, at 900 and 1000 respectively. And then going towards the bottom with two points, we've got X-Tool, GWIC, and Atom Stack at 600. And then finally at the very bottom with one point is the Ohmtek Polar Plus at 500 millimeters per second. Now I don't have a stat for Glowforge uh, because they are notorious for not actually putting out their real speed stats. Basically they just compare the machines against themselves. So like the Pro HD is like 12 times faster than their slowest machine, but kind of taking their word for it and comparing how it's stacked up in the past, I'm gonna give them a three. And our nerdy speed reference has got to be Orlando Bloom running super fast with like a Blonde Elf Wick. Next up is acceleration, like all of those men on horses running around throughout the countryside of New Zealand. And initially I didn't have acceleration on this list, but if you've used a laser, especially for engraving, a lot of the actual machine project time, the laser isn't firing because it's got to slow down and speed up. Usually it's like at full speed while the laser's going to keep it consistent. So how fast it can speed up and slow down makes a pretty big impact. The more engraving, and especially like the more narrow engraving that you do. So this has a pretty big impact on like the throughput of the machine. And this kind of more or less is gonna mirror uh, the speed because this is all based on the stepper motor uh, you've got Aeon Mira, the RF at the top end with five points at 8G acceleration. And then you have Epilogue, the DC glass version of Aeon, uh, as well as the Thunderbolt, all with 3G acceleration. And then I'm putting the Flux Hexa and the Glowforge Pro, which I couldn't find stats on, uh, but just based on kind of the speed stats, I'm gonna give them a two. And then rounding out the bottom is going to be the X-Tool P2S, uh, Ohmtek, GWIC, and the Atom Stack Hurricane, uh, which is basically either 1G or less, with the very slowest machine being the Ohmtek Polar Plus at 0.5. Again, the very top was 8G. All right, next up is going to be build quality. And if you're watching, the Rings of Power, they have a really cool forge from the elves uh, where they're making some pretty impressive stuff as well as some stuff that isn't so great. This was the workshop of Celebrimbor. But this one's gonna be a little bit more subjective. Um, basically, I'm giving Thunder, Aeon, and Epilogue all five points. They all do an incredible job with their machines. Uh, stepping down from that, I'm gonna have the X-Tool P2S. Uh, they're not using as nice of materials, uh, but still the design is well thought out and put together. And Glowforge is gonna be the same case. I'm gonna give them both three points. Then uh, the Flux Hexa and the Atom Stack Hurricane, I'm giving two points. Kind of their fit and finish is okay, but not excellent. Their fit and finish is okay, but not like super great. And then finally at the bottom, I'm going with Ohmtek Polar and the G-Wick Cloud 
Pro with one. All right, next up is work area. And what better way to show work area than a map? I've actually separated this from the depth of the machine. So like how far the Z axis can go down. Um, so this is just the X and the Y. And what I've done, I've just multiplied the X and the Y dimensions. And these are in inches. With the biggest work area going to the Flux Hexa, it actually is a really massive machine with five. Then the XTool, and the XTool P2S comes in next with four points. Also has a really nice work area. Then pretty much all of the other machines are a two. Other than the Glowforge Pro HD, which is actually the smallest, and that's going to get one point. Now, going from work area to the depth of the machine. And for depth, we've got to go deep with the doors. The doors of Durin. This one's a little bit harder because this stat sometimes shows up differently. And I actually don't have dimensions for several of these machines. But a lot of the machines are going to be in the two to two and a half inch uh, Z axis range to where if you want to have more depth, you actually have to purchase like an accessory. So this is something that the XTool P2 and the P2S do with a riser. And you have to have that riser in order to do a rotary and then have thicker material underneath it. So pretty much all of these machines are going to get a two other than the Aeon Mira. Uh, so both versions are both going to be at five and a half inches. That's going to give us a four. And then the two machines that have the biggest depth, which is right at seven inches, is going to be the Thunderbolt and then the Epilogue Maker 12. And that's going to give us five points. And our second to last category has to do with the interface. What are the physical controls on on the actual machine. So I had to stretch the Lord of the Rings reference. I'm gonna say the interface is like all of the languages that got invented to have the characters talk to each other. That kind of works, right? We say no more. But the interfaces are really gonna come in three different flavors. First is going to be just a single button. That's gonna be what Glowforge and the GWIP Cloud have. That's only gonna give us one point. Next is gonna be a single button, but then a few like light indicators. And that's gonna be our Atomsec Hurricane and P2S. So that's gonna give us two points. Next up from there is going to be our touch screens. From the looks of it, the Polar Plus touch screen isn't gonna be quite at the same quality as our higher end machines. So I'm gonna give that three points and then everything else. So those top end machines have like a fully integrated touch screen with a good bit of storage to where basically you can run everything from the machine itself. You don't have to have it connected to a computer and that's gonna give us five points. And that wasn't our second to last. This is our second to last category. I got mixed up. We're talking about software. What piece of software are you using to make the plan that the laser is then going to execute? And where did they make a plan in Lord of the Rings? It was in Rivendell at the Council of Elrond and it also is a really cool like I said. Welcome to Rivendell. Now this one is kind of hard because you might like certain software better than other. So basically like the industry standard is going to be Lightburn, but I'm gonna give that a three and you honestly might disagree with that and you'll get Lightburn support with all those machines. But then also I'm gonna give the XTool P2S three points as well. Uh, you can't really use Lightburn with it, but, but they really have come pretty far with their software. I'm gonna say it's pretty comparable. I am gonna give higher points to the Flux Hex as well as the Atom Stack Hurricane, because not only can you use Lightburn with them, you can also use their specific software. Uh, their software isn't as good as Lightburn, but I'll give them a bump in points for, I guess, trying. Uh, and then finally, I'm also going to give Epilog full four points because not only do they have like full pieces of software, you can also manage jobs. It's a, just a fully thought out ecosystem that they've done a really good job with. And speaking of ecosystem, at the very bottom was just one point. I'm going to give Glowforge because they don't support anything else and their actual software isn't the most powerful. But you could actually rank this at the top because it's probably the most user friendly, although Xtool is really giving them a run for the money. But for for me, I'm gonna rank them a one. And our final category has to do with support. And then who better to represent this category than a true ride or die, and that is Sam. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. And support really ties into the company itself. So this not only is like support docs, but if you can get on the phone with people, a lot of this is this like English slash like US based support where you can talk to with a real person, not just looking through forums online. Uh, and the best support is gonna be with those top end companies. So Thunder, Aeon, and Epilogue. I'm giving all of those five. Down from there is going to be Xtool as well as Glowforge because they really don't have like phone support. But because they're so popular, a lot of times you'll be able to like 
like Google and find your answer either through their forums or just someone else on the internet having an issue. I'm gonna say a step down from there is gonna be Ohm Tech and Flux with two points. And then at the very bottom, I'm gonna have GWIC and Atomstack. They're both saying they're gonna have better support in the future, but you're pretty much on your own at this point, trying to troubleshoot whatever's going on with the machine. So for my final rankings going from worst to best, at the very bottom, we've got the Glowforge Pro HD, which if you remember is $7,000. So actually our third most expensive machine. And then going up from there, we've got the GWIC Cloud, the Ohmtech Polar Plus, and the Atomstack Hurricane. And I would say those machines kind of all are in the same category. And while they're ranked the lowest, um, they're also going to be the least expensive. Next is going to be the Xtool P2S. And then right after that, the Flux Hexa. And the top end is going to be from those more professional companies that also come with that more professional price. Uh, starting with the Aeon Mira at number four, this is the DC glass version. Next is the Thunderbolt. And we actually have a tie for first place with our two most expensive machines, the, the Aeon Mira 5S and the Epilog Maker 12, where the Aeon Mira 5S has the advantage on the speed as well as acceleration. And then Epilog has the advantage on the depth as well as what I'm saying, the software. The Mira is a thousand dollars cheaper, but compared to this entire list, I gave them both a zero. Uh, because they're very, very expensive. But there's still one other company we need to talk about. One other laser that could rule them all. And that is gonna be from one laser. And honestly, the whole reason I did this Lord of the Rings bit, I just did a video going through the specs on these machines. I definitely have people in the comments saying, we'd love to see this when it's actually real. Right now it's basically like a vaporware laser, so sure. But taking their stats into account. This is what it looks like when we add in the DC glass tube version of their desktop machine, what they're calling the XT. I actually have that tying with the Thunderbolt, which honestly kind of makes sense because I believe they have a pretty tight partnership with Thunder. They're actually using a lot of Thunder's production uh, abilities, but the key aspect of it is when they launch, it's going to be a good bit cheaper. Uh, so the Thunderbolt is at 5,500 and the One Laser XT is going to be 3,600. So if those specs hold true, this could be a really good deal when it comes out. Now there's another version of the One Laser and this is gonna be their RF tube. This is gonna be 38 watts. If I add that into the list, things get a little bit crazy because it actually winds up tying for first with the Epilog Maker 12 and the RF version of the Aeon Mira, where they're getting a lot of the points from the fact that it is thousands of dollars cheaper and I'm still gonna have the speed advantage, but in terms of build quality and support, I'm kind of making them equal. But with one laser, we definitely will need to wait and see. And I will have a review of their machine once it gets into my shop in a couple weeks. All right, I'd love to know from you, did I get these rankings right? Which one would you pick? And most importantly, was my wizard costume worth it? All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. <laughs> Golly. Oh.